Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Got a couple of things to talk about in this video, including one of my more anticipated games of 2019 being an absolute disaster. Yet another Square Enix release, and I was saying that it's very paramount that this game turn out to be well for Square Enix because for a long time, for a little while now at least, Square Enix has just been very hit or miss. You look at games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Just Cause 4, The Quiet Man. Those games were either critical or commercial disasters. In the case of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the game was received pretty well, but but sales-wise, it was pretty poor. Left Alive being this new IP, I was really hoping it would resonate with gamers. Unfortunately, from a big-budget game, I think this is the worst-received Steam release of all time based on Steam reviews. An embarrassing 12% of the reviews are positive. Now, there are only 71 reviews posted, but this game is getting absolutely trashed, and it's so unfortunate. I haven't played it myself, but it does look like there's a lot of optimization issues, and it's just very, very unfortunate. Outside of that, I also want to talk about a game called Chernobylite. That game's system requirements have been revealed, and it's it's a game being developed by the Farm 51, kind of giving me some vibes of the Stalker series, a pretty interesting science fiction survival horror game, and I'll take you guys through the system requirements for that. Also, I want to round out this video by taking a look at some great deals. Humble Indie Bundle 20 is posted. Not a great bundle, but the dollar tier is quite good, and I would recommend that. Also, a great deal on Dragon Quest 11 and Battlefield 5 has seen a significant discount. More on that at the end of this video. First up, let's talk about Left Alive. This game I just had a lot of interest in. There was a star studded cast of developers working on the game, including Toshifumi Nabashima, the director of Armored Core, Yoji Shinokawa from Kojima Productions, Yanase, the mech designer from Ghost in the Shell Arise, Mobile Suit Gundam 00, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and the premise of the game just seems so interesting. You've got all these mechs. I felt like this was a game that would have been a home run commercially as long as it turned out well critically, and if the reception from people that played it initially was strong, I think it would have just spread through word of mouth. Unfortunately, this game has been an absolute train wreck. Again, 12% of the 71 reviews are positive. That means it's gotten a very negative reception on Steam. The reviews haven't been posted on Metacritic or anything like that. But the Steam reviews are up, and it looks like the majority of the complaints right now are from an optimization issue, but even so, a game should be absolutely trash for its optimization issues. One reviewer posted, one of the most unoptimized games on the market, an absolute joke, the game is terrible too, outdated animations and graphics from early PlayStation 3, extremely clunky. Somebody else said, is this a effing joke, man? Low settings and it's a slideshow on a GTX 1060 with an i5 8300, like 3 FPS WTF. Other people are reporting crashing issues, and keep in mind that this was a full $59.99 release. It stings a little bit less when this happens with a game that's released at, you know, $19.99, $29.99. But this was a game that people were dropping a full $60 for. Thank God that on Steam we do have Steam refunds, but can you imagine if you bought this game on consoles and you bought it new? No way to get your money back for it. All you can really do is trade it in, or if you bought it digitally on the PlayStation Store, it's pretty much over for you. Sometimes Sony will give you refunds. We saw that with Anthem, but for Left Alive, this game is a disaster. Do not buy it. And it's really depressing to me because I thought this game had a lot of potential again with the star study cast working on the game. The premise, the fact that Metal Gear has gone to the wayside, this could have been a game that really filled that void, but obviously at this point, Left Alive is not going to be that game. Probably going to be one of the biggest flops of the year when we look back at 2019 as a whole. All right, moving on from that unfortunate news, let's look at a game that is pretty interesting, and that is Chernobylite. Chernobylite is a science fiction survival horror experience mixing the free exploration of its disturbing world with challenging combat, unique crafting, and non-linear storytelling. You're gonna have to try to survive and reveal the twisted secrets of Chernobyl in the 3D scan recreation of the real exclusion zone. The game is being developed by the Farm 51, and they've actually created some other interesting titles, and they most recently did Get Even, which released back in 2017. I wouldn't say that any of those games were absolute slam dunk home runs. However, they are pretty interesting games, and I think Chernobylite has a lot of potential. Why I'm talking about it right now is because the system requirements have been posted, and I do want to take you guys through that. The game's minimum CPU requirement is an Intel Core i5-2500K. Whenever I see a 2500K, I get a little bit happy, because that's a Sandy Bridge CPU from so many years ago, and to see it still trucking along now, in 2019. That is pretty incredible, and this is a game that's going to be released in the autumn, so it's not even like it's out soon and it's a 2500k. No, this is a game that's going to be out a little bit later. 2500k is still the minimum CPU requirement. Minimum RAM requirement is 8 gigabytes, and then GPU is a GTX 770 or a Radeon HD 7870. Recommended side of things, things get a lot more beefy with an Intel Core i7, 4790k being recommended, 16 gigabytes of recommended RAM, a GTX 970 or an R9 290. Also wanted to note that this game will require a 45 gigabytes of storage space, which is pretty interesting because I don't believe the Farm 51's previous titles have been all too big, but 45 gigabytes leads me to believe that it is going to be, you know, a big budget experience of sorts. 
To give you guys a comparison point, Necrovision, one of their other games, was an 8GB download, but that did release all the way back in 2010, so not really a fair comparison point. And actually, in fact, Get Even was a little bit smaller, but still sizably big at 40 gigabytes. So this is a game to keep an eye on. Definitely has an interesting premise. But I said the same thing about Left Alive. At least the Farm 51 has a decent track record. Again, not all slam dunk home runs. But based on what I'm seeing with Chernobylite, there is definitely potential here. I'll keep you guys posted as we see more gameplay and hear more about the game. Lastly, I do want to round out this video by taking a look at some great deals that are available right now. Notably, the Humble Indie Bundle 20 is available right now. I don't think this is an absolutely excellent Humble Bundle. I've definitely seen better Humble Bundles in the past, but I do think the pay what you want here is really good. So at a minimum of a dollar, that'll get you tangled deep among the sleep and the first tree. The first tree is a really cool game, and that's the game that's really highlighting the pay what you want for me. And actually, out of the three games in the pay what you want tier, from a Steam reception standpoint, the first tree has the worst reception with 80% positive reviews. It's still very positive. Tangle Deep has 88% positive, and then Among the Sleep has 86%. Again, a dollar for those three games, I think, is quite good. Beat the Average is 346. That'll get you Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. So that's a little bit of an odd one. But you do get that. You also get Tooth and Tail, and then getting over it with Bennett Foddy. And then the pay $10 or more tier, I wouldn't really recommend this. You do get over growth. I believe this was a part of a humble monthly before. So eh, the value isn't really there to pay $10 or more. I would at the very least get the $1 tier. If you do want to beat the average of 346, Tooth and Tail is quite good. However, those other two games aren't anything to write home about. Again, I would stick to that $1 tier. Also, right now, Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age, a tremendous JRPG, is available on GreenManGaming.com for $30, and there's a promo code that'll knock it down to $24. That's a great deal for one of 2018's best games. If you're a fan of Japanese RPGs, you absolutely should buy this. Square Enix did a tremendous job on this game. Left Alive is one end of the spectrum, Dragon Quest XI on the other end, and DQ11 is a great game. Unlike Final Fantasy, the Dragon Quest games just traditionally retain their fundamentals. It's a turn-based JRPG, so it's an old-school style in that regard, but the story is great. The characters are engaging, and you're talking about a 50 to 70 hour JRPG experience here that's pretty engaging. Great art style here as well, and now that you're paying $24, a much more palatable price point. And lastly, I do want to let you guys know about Origin's EA Publisher sale. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend any games that are a part of Origin Access. If you're interested in any of those, just sign up for Origin Access. It's $30 a year. If you sign up for the yearly subscription and it gets you a lot of those games. However, Battlefield is down to $29.99. And I think that's a pretty good deal on BF5. BF5, all things considered, is a pretty good Battlefield game. It's just the promotion and the marketing for the game was an absolute train wreck. As a Battlefield game, it's not a bad game. There's a quality single player campaign in there. And for $30, it's not a bad buy. This game just plummeted in price, however. And I could foresee it being an Origin Access title in the near future. So it may pay dividends to hold off a little bit longer. But if you guys have been eager to check out BF5, $30 definitely isn't a bad pickup on that. Should also note Star Wars Battlefront 2 is down to $6. Titanfall 2 is down to $7.49 and of course Titanfall 2 has had a jolt in its player base because of Apex Legends. So now might not be a bad time to check out that. Do remember again those two games that I just mentioned are available as a part of Origin Access. It's $5 a month if you want to go the monthly route. So if you pay for a month of that you'll get access to Titanfall 2. You'll get access to the vault games. You'll get access to a bunch of other stuff. That's probably the route to go. However if you do like to buy your games and own them forever Titanfall 2 for $7.49 of course I'm going to give that a strong recommendation. That game is great. And good to see Respawn get some more attention after the release of Apex Legends. That's going to conclude this video, guys. Again, if you were interested in Left Alive like me, wait for a while on this one. Who knows? Maybe it'll go on sale really quickly. It'll be down in the bargain bin, maybe under $10, and it'll be worth that. But right now, the reception has been very, very poor. Chernobylite, however, is shaping up pretty nicely. Going to keep an eye on that one. And again, links to Humble Indie Bundle 20 and Dragon Quest 11 will be in the description box down below. Check out EA's publisher sale as well on Origin. Couple of good deals as a part of that. That's gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comment section down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.